Hey everyone and welcome to another session here in the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. Today we're going to take a look at using Photoshop and InDesign together to prepare the front of this mailer with a special varnish finish. Now this one does use some advanced concepts, but even if you haven't done this kind of thing yet, it's worth you watching as you will pick up some other useful tips and tricks that you can use right away. Plus, you'll know some of what's involved when you do come across special finishes. So I've got the mailer here started and I've got this background image here of a mop and this outlined uh, text just on the top here. And over in Photoshop, I've got the actual image file here. So let me show you how this is built out. So there's the original background there, which happens to be an image from Adobe Stock. And then there's an isolated version of the mop just there with the layer mask controlling that. And if I just hold down shift and click the mask, you'll see that there the original content is just there. I've also got a path just here which has been created and that covers in fact if i just hold down the command key here and click it that would be control of course on windows now i'm going to tap q just for a second to go into quick mask mode here you can see what's captured in there with that particular path and that will come along later to work as both a clipping path if we need it and also for something with a special finish so I'll actually start there. If I turn that on, I've made it easier for you to actually see the path. And if I just deselect there as well, and I'm going to come along here to the flyout menu and choose to save this path. And I'll just call this one clipper just there because it's going to be a clipping mask there or a clipping path. And then I'll go back to the menu and choose the clipping path option and then choose that path. I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to save that file and I'm going to go back to InDesign. And you'll notice I've got a little flag here telling me it's out of date. So I'll just click on the small flag. And at the moment, it's using the last state of the file. So I'll just right click here. I'm going to go to Object Layer Options just there. And I'll turn on the background as well so I can see both of my layers just there. I'm then going to copy this. So I'm going to lift that by copying command C and then I'm going to paste it in place. And you can do that either using the incredibly long shortcut shift alt control or shift option command and V or you can go up to the edit menu at the top here and choose paste in place and a new copy arrives on top of the other one. So what I'm going to do there is just right click on that to access the context menu, go to my object layer options, pretty much as you saw me do a moment ago, and I'll turn off the background. So there we go. Now we've got the mop across the top of the text just there. Now, just to make things a little bit easier for you to see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the visibility for those two images. So if I turn off the one in the background first, and then I'll turn out the one on the top, just so you can see that they've both gone. Okay, they're just hidden just for the time being. Now I'm going to prepare the things for the special finish. And what I need to do there is to actually create a new color and it needs to be a spot color. It really doesn't matter what the color is. It's just there in place of the varnish. So I'm going to come along and choose a new color swatch. I'm going to take the name away there or the color value, and I'm going to call this varnish just there. Or if it was another finish, I might name it after that. I'll change it to spot and then I'll just mix some arbitrary color here like so something ideally that I don't have in the document already. Although that again is not important. I'll hit OK just there. So I've got my new spot color and I can see it. And what I'm going to do now is go back to the layers panel and once more, I'm going to paste in place. OK, so if I just do that, the file comes down like so. So I've now got three copies of that in the file. So I'll go up to the object menu here and I'm going to come down 
to the clipping path and access the clipping path options and then I'll choose my path here. So if I go to Photoshop path, it then recognizes clipper like so. Perfect. So I've got that as a clipping path, but I don't actually want the image because I've already got that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click. I'm going to come down to this option here, convert clipping path to frame. And that replaces the frame it has with the contents there. Now I don't actually need the image inside, so I could get my direct selection tool, for example, come along and click on the contents there and delete that image. You can see I've got the frame there, which I'm then going to fill, okay, with my spot varnish color there like so. So if I just click there to fill this or even drag the swatch onto that if I want to. Now I've just noticed that I've got a black stroke on there so I'm going to tap X to bring my stroke to the front then hit the slash key to remove that and tap X to go back to the fill and so there's one more important thing that needs to be done when you've got a special finish and that's that it usually overprints always check with your printer but it usually overprints so while that is still selected I'll come up to the window menu I'll come down to the output options here and choose attributes and then select overprint fill there like so. So this fill will overprint. Now you won't notice any difference at first, but if I go into the view mode here and choose overprint preview, you'll see how that ink, although it will be a varnish of course, will go across the top of the artwork. I'll turn off overprint preview just for a moment. We'll go back to the layers panel just here. OK, and now we'll turn on the things which are currently hidden. So we'll turn on that top option there and that. Let's go back into Overprint Preview. So View, Overprint Preview, and there we are. That's pretty much ready to go. And that's how you can add a special varnish using a clipping path from Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and do be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. But for now, we're done. And until next time, see ya.